Welcome, Carm Capriato, the Service Aftermarkets Podcast Pioneer with the gold standard of aftermarket business podcasts. Join me for aftermarket insights as we advance the aftermarket. And as always, know that you'll learn just one thing. Find us on your favorite podcast listening app and RemarkableResults.biz or on my YouTube channel. Hey, everybody. Carm Capriato. Good to have you here, the Aftermarkets Pi- Podcast Pioneer. You know, we couldn't do this without you, so we thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel, our Carm Capriato YouTube channel, and whatever podcast listening app that you're listening on. Good stuff. I've got a really great episode with David Boyce coming up. But first, join your friends in Ontario. Yes, that's Canada. <laughs> At the AARO event from September 12th to 14th, from insightful business training to cutting edge technical Linder tech training. And if Many of our North American friends understand Linder Tech. They've got something for everyone, business management and technology. Join me and Tracy at the exclusive reception and trade show on the 12th. This event will sell out, so secure your spot at aaro.ca. Welcome, David. Happy to be back. Thanks for having me. David Boys. Today's class, great sponsor of the show, great piece of software. Wherever I go, we talk about it, and people say, oh, I didn't know about that. We got to have that. So if you don't have today's class, you, you've got to get it. Don't be an outlier. And uh, I've been chatting with, uh, with Paul Pate recently about some stuff. I want to talk about gamification because when we were doing an episode at Vision, David, it was AJ Neely who was just there. He just loves your software and he loves to be on the top of the heap as far as all of his points or everything. He, you know, he's here's the owner, but he wants to keep his roots rooted in the bay and he has fun with today's class and every once in a while we stop and think is it an educational thing or is it something that we can culture around get together and have some fun with so i want you to tell us how gamification comes into play with your software Sure. So in our environment, we really need users to come in consistently. It's a daily training experience, and we need to have hooks for you to come in and and continue to learn day by day by day. Some people will just be interested in learning, and, and that's enough for them. But another lever that we have available is the general idea of gamification. Now, that can take various forms in terms of team based competition individual competition, literal like online games. And and I can explain further on that, but it's essentially a a tool that's available to help, you know, enhance the overall experience for a learner. If it's helping them get into the platform, that's a good thing. If that's, if it's helping them interact with their team members or their manager, that can be a good thing. If they're having fun, that's even better. So we can drive that. Obviously each organization has their own requirements and, and culture. So we try to be flexible to, to try and fit their needs. But more often than not, there there is an element of gamification that can apply to most groups in our experience. Yeah, you know, gamification, there's so many definitions of it. And there's a lot of people that out that use it out there. Does it encourage excitement competition at all? Yeah. I mean, again, it will depend on the individual organization and how they position it. But very frequently for our customers, one of the default gamification features in our world is really a a rewards points based system. The more you train, the more active you are, the higher you will climb up that leaderboard among your peers. So it's very easy to to earn points because just getting your training done is is a big piece of it. But there are groups that will very much incentivize being at the top of that list or on the other hand, being avoiding the bottom of the list may be just as important. It really depends on how an organization tries to to leverage that. You know, are they trying to position that drive to be number one, or are they trying to avoid exceptions and say, "Hey, look, you have to keep up." You know, you do not want to be the person at the bottom of this list. So, is it the shop owner that has to stop and say, "Okay, now what do I do? I've got today's class. What do I do with this thing?" Or, "Hey, let's encourage each other to keep up. Let's set." some rewards, some, let's put up some prizes and get the engagement from the team or does today's class on their website have a million ideas on how they could make this gamified? That's a good question. So the way we position it is that the overall goal of our training is to help these shops develop their teams. There's a business objective for it. 
gamification is a tool we might leverage to help help you get there. So we tend to consult with our customers to say, what is it you are trying to achieve? What best fits your culture? And again, that might vary based on your staff, the ages, generally what your objectives are. But, but generally speaking, we have a few common themes that we see with groups and we'll talk to them and, and try to refine these approaches to, to best fit what they are aiming for. They don't have to do it our way. We've got a few different options, a few different paths here, different reports, different ways to look at it where we can more often than not align with the way that they are trying to drive it. It's very common for them to have a lot of questions on the front end and we encourage them to think about it. I mean, the points will just come you know, as you use it. That's just a default setting, but how they want to apply it towards what they're trying to drive for their business that's typically something they need to think about themselves, maybe talk to their employees and understand, all right, what is going to drive the desired behavior? If I incent things with prizes, is that something that's going to move the needle for my team? Or do they not care about that? They want bragging rights. So there's, again, different ways for them to spin it to best fit their unique group. What are you seeing out there? Bragging rights is it's cool? Bragging rights is the big one. So the, and that one, again, it kind of comes out of the box, essentially. So that one is pretty much available to everybody right out of the gate. The individual competition is key, but then we have a lot of groups where they can compete at, well, they can all compete as teams, but we have networks of groups, like members of a 20 group, for example, that are in the same kind of cluster within today's class. And then you might have shops that are competing with each other, shop owners that are friends, betting lunches on it, that sort of thing, and where it just makes it a little more fun. The power of the team-based engagement is that, if you and I are on a team and our boss is incenting our team score to be higher, you may hold me accountable to make sure I'm doing my training. And that can be a very helpful piece of this puzzle too, where you have a group of technicians and service advisors that are all kind of rooting each other on for the ultimate benefit of the team. Got it. Hey, before we go too much further, if anyone is listening to this podcast or watching this video and saying, I've never met David before. I don't know what the hell today's class is. <laughs> I almost think we want to give them the shortened version of what today's class is all about. Sure. So we're a training platform, but the way we're bringing training to market is a little different than the traditional online training. The most common experience that folks are familiar with is one of the course-based training. I take a course on breaks or suspension. I do it once, I pass the test, and maybe I move on. And, and maybe I revisit that down the road. We're coming at it a little different way, deconstructing that training down to smaller pieces that are pushed to users daily. The system is also then flexing based on each user's knowledge and where they're supposed to be going to lean on them where they need help. So again, tying it back to gamification, if we're going to create an environment where a technician is gonna log in five times a week to knock out their training, it's in our interest and the technician's interest for that experience to be relevant to them from a learning perspective, but ideally engaging as well. And that's where we pull in these various components such as gamification to help drive that behavior and that consistent usage. So as an owner, I could say to myself, listen, I'm gonna pick a particular area of study and then put some gamification goals on it or awards or prizes or bragging rights and maybe move that quarterly? Is, is that a thought? Yeah, I think so. I, variety, I think, is very important because it keeps it fresh. For example, an example that, that's not super exciting would be, let's say, to have a $50 Amazon gift card. That is the, the prize for every month. I mean, sooner or later, that will get stale for an audience or will most most of the time. We believe from a learning experience, one, you may wanna shift your learning priorities from time to time. That could be due to seasonality. That could be due to uh, what you're seeing out in the bays. That could be due to getting your team ready for, maybe they're gonna do a push on ASE certifications. So by, by keeping that fresh, it'll keep them on their toes a bit and allow them to expand in different ways. But from a gamification, gamification or a, a competitive campaign perspective, the same thing can apply. So maybe this quarter, we're going to be chasing some individual rewards, gift cards, tools. We had one group that just offered a set of tires for one of their employees that, that performs best. There's lots of clever ideas out there. Mm -hmm. So maybe that individual competition moves the needle for a few months. 
but then you can mix it up and then maybe it's okay. Now we want our team to be in the top three in our network for the next, if we can do it month by month, I'm buying lunch or whatever it is. So those types of options, again, help keep it fresh and allows them to flex a bit based on what they're seeing in the shop because they might hear something from an employee that says, hey, this would really get me excited about doing it. And it's flexible enough to help accommodate that. I think an owner and or a team could get super creative. OMG, mm-hmm. you talk about, oh, I just heard someone said, be neat if I could get $1,000 for my vacation this year. Wouldn't that be something yep. cool if I could be at the top of the leaderboard? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we have, it, it's really fun, honestly, to, to see what ideas these groups come up with. And sometimes they build off one another. So the, the tire example I mentioned, that was new within the past week or two. We, I mean, we work with a lot of yeah. tire dealers, but I haven't yeah. seen anybody essentially, and this one is a, a points-based raffle that is occurring in the platform. So people can buy raffle tickets based on the amount of points they have. And somebody's going to win a set of four tires, which is cool. They buy the raffle ticket based on the number of points. I love that. And what a cool mm-hmm. concept. Yep. So there's a raffle capability. There's an auction capability. And then there's also what we call a shop capability. Now, the shop function is often used for things like company swag. So you want to redeem a thousand points and get a company hoodie or maybe a tool, something like that. But we also see groups that use that for PTO. Buy a half day (sighs) off. I'm going to buy a full day off. And then we have one group now that's kind of merging these concepts and raffling off a week of vacation around Christmas time late this year. Again, that might really move the needle for some folks. It may not for others. So that's where, again, the organization, they can test and learn and figure out what factors are best going to incent that behavior. And the in the best cases, this creates excitement, discussion, chatter among their groups. And ideally, those are the types of programs you want to have because yeah. then it goes beyond just learning and earning points. It, it's a general vibe within that shop environment. And the software provides a dashboard. So I think can everyone get a chance to see what the leaderboards look like? Yep, absolutely. So typically you do your daily training, takes you three to five minutes a day. And most users behavior based on our analytics say that after they do their daily training, their next stop is essentially to go look at the leaderboard. How am I doing? How is our team doing? So that is one of the most viewed sections of the platform. Okay, help me with the team thing. Are you talking about inter-competitive play between other shops or internally? Uh, A bit of both. Depends on the group. So we have with independent shops, we typically have them in groups. So it could be a group of, of shops that are all Napa Auto Cares or okay. all affiliated with this particular group. So we'll we'll often create clusters and, it, and it's flexible. We sometimes have a group of shop owners that just know each other and they want to yeah. compete with them. But the How way cool that the math, that? yeah, it makes it, they have their own little network. But the way that the math essentially works is that if you have a five person shop and those five people are earning points day by day, We calculate an average. What's that team score? And how's that team score stack against your team score? And it creates, again, a little bit of banter. Some people are very serious about their points tallies. Definitely can get a little heated from time to time. (laughs) Work with me on the logistics here. I'm involved in a six-store group, and we're doing a Mm -hmm. gamification thing with today's class and trying to keep our people. I mean, ultimately, what we're trying to do is keep Mm -hmm. them on the cutting edge of knowledge and what they know and to prove to us what they know. Uh, And someone earns this, if you will, extra couple of days of PTO, all the tools, tires, it's all on my dime as the owner of the shop, right? I mean, we're, no one else is contributing, but we're involved in this as an esprit de corps and a training culture improvement. And even though it ends up becoming competitive, I still pay for everything. Typically, yes. So that is 90% of the use cases that that the shop would say, I either have this thing, I've got a gift card, I've got a tool, I've got PTO, I've got mm-hmm. swag. Sometimes they are collaborating with their parts providers or their tool truck to make things available. From time to time, we've done things as an organization to make things available to a group. And then we've also had other organizations provide things across the spectrum. AutoZone sponsored an event last fall where there was some Duralast, Bluetooth speakers, 
some mugs and some other things that they made available and it it made it kind of a fun experience. You know, they were able to share their items out there and it just made it fun. But by and large, most of the time, it's an individual shop saying, here's what I have. And they're not going crazy on their budget. I mean, there's certainly Got some yeah, some yeah. groups that are more aggressive, but it tends to be within their comfort zone. All right. Swag is cool. And if I was a particular business, I, I belong to a group and we're competing against different shops, then everyone at the shop wins or just an individual who's on the top of the leaderboard? So it, it, it can depend. So the way that a team-based competition will often work, and we've done this where we've provided, let's say, lunches. So if we've got this particular group of 10 shops, they're all competing with each other. Maybe we'll say, hey, whichever shop is on top of the list at the end of this time frame, we're sending lunch. So we did a competition like this earlier in the year that we framed as March Madness. And then the the winning shop, which I believe was Tom Ham's Auto Centric, mm-hmm. where they are always like right there at the top all the time. We sent them lunch. We sent them uh, some gift cards. And that was one that we took on. But they were all watching the scoreboard pretty closely to see how it would net out. I would love to play in that sandbox. Please jingle me when you need someone to help buy lunch for a top team, I would step and do that. That is so cool. Do these typically last monthly or quarterly, these competitions? Well, groups can, again, they can, I don't mean to keep saying okay. it, it's different oh, that's for okay. everybody, but, you're but, saying but it's very flexible. It so just, but from your experience, David, it, monthly, so it stays fresh and it doesn't go, I mean, sometimes a, a quarter is way too long. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, m- monthly. So the scoreboard resets on a monthly basis. So monthly tends to be the segment that we're looking for more often than not. We have done things over a period of months, but primarily so we could thin out the audience a bit. So for that March Madness example, we had in January and February of 2024, all of these shops competing. And then essentially we established a finalist group heading into March where we had, I think, 10 or 12 shops were in that final tier. I see. But then we ran it specifically for that month. Hey, Apex 2024 registration is now open at aapexshow.com. Now, Apex has an incredible value for the service professional shop owner, technician, and service advisor. Joe's Garage is your place to hang out with 10 working bays and real live working conditions. You'll find special seminars on Audi, VW, BMW, Mercedes, Tesla, under the hood diagnostics, advanced drivability, ADAS calibration, transmission training from ATRA, and more. Business and sales training on mastering organizational skills, time management, leading your team, and driving profits, among others. This year, the training courses are some of the best offered ever with the industry's best and brightest trainers and coaches. This year's Apex 2024 will have more product demos, trending training, marketing and social media support to help you grow your career, sales, and profits. Remember, if you earn your living in the aftermarket, then Apex is the expo for you. Continue listening as we bring you the latest from Apex 2024 and save the date, November 5th through the 7th. Don't hesitate. Go to aapexshow.com. Hey, let's face it. Your shop management system is the single most important tool in your shop, period. Napa Tracks has made selecting the right shop management system easy by offering the industry's best, most comprehensive SMS. Now, it all starts when a local representative meets with you to learn about your business and how you need to run it. After all, it's your shop, so it's your choice. And having local representation is a huge plus. Customizing tracks to your business, whether you're a one-person shop or a large multi-bay or multi-location company, a representative consults with you to help optimize your shop's workflow, efficiency, and profitability. Trax always has the flexibility to do business how you need to do it, which means it can also grow as your business grows. And unlike the other guys, we'll be there for you after installation with the best training and support in the business. Yes, a learning management system tailored to each role in your company. Simply put, Trax was designed and built for shop owners just like you. Visit us on the web at NapaTrax, that's N-A-P-A-T-R-A-C-S dot com. Hey, ever wonder how your labor rate compares to your market and state? You now have a site where you can confidentially upload your rate and see other labor rates published in your market. 
LaborRateTracker.com is an important site to know about. Currently, the database has over a thousand shops participating and growing every day. But there's more to setting your rates than finding out what others charge. You should look at the labor rates in your state and town to gain a complete picture of the labor rate landscape. Hey, it's easy. Get market intelligence like never before at LaborRateTracker.com. I want to try to think about this, uh, think for my listener. I'm mm-hmm. listening. I'm, I've got today's class and my buddy down the road does. And I think there's some other people that I know in my, if you will, network that are seriously thinking of getting this. I would be the proactive person to pick up the phone and says, hey, let's build a little gamification thing. Let's put some awards up. Let's do a monthly thing. Go listen to Commerce Podcast, get an idea how this thing works. Maybe communicate with David or the rest of the people inside of of today's class, your support people, and figure it out. I, I guess what I just don't go there and flip a switch and it works. Bring some creativity. Be proactive to want to do this because the software is there and it's going to churn and it's going to do its job if you have it. But hmm, would you like a cake with cherries and some icing and maybe whipped cream on top? That's what this thing almost sounds like. And for these groups that know each other, it's it's pretty simple. They yeah. can see essentially this this okay. you know, ranking. They often just make these agreements offline, essentially. You know, whether, you whether a lunch see? or a traveling trophy, you know, those uh, types of it. things. <laughs> they will see. I mean, we have we have groups. We have one group that actually has a like a WWE style championship belt that gets moved around <laughs> from one it. location to the next. So there's different concepts. So they don't. There are some things that they will likely need our help to set up, but but you certainly don't require our our help. At minimum, the bragging rights are a very common common thing. We had one, for example, a user that's been with us for years. He had recommended it to a friend of his, and they live, you know, like one, one gentleman's in Massachusetts, the other's in Wisconsin. The newer user, once he kind of got through our onboarding stage, wanted to be in his buddy Mark's group. And the first month, his shop beat him. And I knew that that was a thing between them that just made it fun. So those are those this. are kind of simple but effective uses of that gamification feature. This is so good, so interesting, exciting to me. And and I just want to walk through this scenario because people are listening and saying, oh, I got three great friends are in my normal coaching 20 group. I, I want to pull them together because we're all committed to technology specialist, mechanical specialist training. Let's do this. Oh. What do I have to do first? So is it difficult, David? Do they have to go to you? Do they have to search on the site? Do they have to flip a switch on the software? Give me an idea on how I can pull five people together and to get them into a singular gamification group. These five groups are already today's class customers. It's pretty much let us know and we can... Okay. We can move so, in there today. Okay. Um, but if it's new folks, there is a process that we do to, to onboard shops into today's class. Because while this is a very, this can sound like a very attractive feature, there is also work that's required to make sure that your team would use this consistently. So any mm-hmm. independent shop that is interested in today's class, we put them through a 90-day cycle to train them how this works, give them enough time to see the system flex. But essentially, if you come out the other end of that process and you say, yeah, this fits me, I want to continue. And I've got four buddies that are already in it. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Very well said. And thank you for the caveat or the warning. You just can't jump into the deep end of the pool with this thing. It's got to fit. It's got to be, if you will, part of the foundation of your company. If you're going to go out and play in that gamification sandbox with other people's, it you still got to know how it works. You don't get today's class so that you can compete with other shops. You get in it to make your company, your people better. And then right. once you're on that and, and David says, or your people say, hey, you guys got this, you're rocking, you're seeing the dashboard, you're really growing. Oh, remember you had mentioned a while back, you'd love to be in this guy's group over here. We can make that happen now. Okay. So the other thing I would add would be that gamification is is a very nice benefit, but in our experience, it is not enough to like 
drive the usage of the platform yeah. and for Got the it. business to win. They have yeah. to have that core of we are learning, we're trying to leverage this to develop our people and so forth. Gamification, great layer on top of it, but it's Got not it. not enough to kind of move the needle for you. Makes all kind of sense. And I think that's the caveat here. You don't get you don't get inside of today's class so that you can play games on the in the more public world with other shops mm -hmm. and other people's if it's not working you don't do gamification if it's not currently working and taking exactly. you to the next level internally from a knowledge base. What else should I need to know? Because this was this is a perfect, succinct, tiny, short, rock them in the face episode. What else should we know? There are there are other components to gamification that some applications support, like actual games within the platform. And we do have that. As a part of that 90-day period, we flip uh -huh. that on for a week for shops to experience. And some lash onto it. In our previous discussion, you know, with Pat Roberts, he their team loved it. And then AJ went for it. However, yeah. we will put groups through this cycle and we'll flip it on for some of them and they'll say, No, this is not for us. And that's one of those features where again, gamification in our view needs to fit your particular shop and your culture. We, we don't want to do a one size fits all and assume everybody's gonna want it the same way. Fortunately, there's a lot of flex here where typically we can align it. But again, gamification can be a fun thing, but it has to be applied appropriately. I just looked up the episode that we did at Vision. It's a Town Hall 371. We titled it Daily Dose of Top Tier Training from Today's Class. And David Boyce, you, AJ Neely, Patrick Roberts. It was a blast. <laughs> that episode was so much fun. Yeah, it was. It was a good time. It was a great time and a lot of learning there. Town Hall Academy 371. Either look for it on the website or on your uh, podcast listening app. David, this was great. It was fun. Thank you very much. Come back anytime. Tell us about gamification 2.0 someday. <laughs> oh, no. Got it. <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll be. So appreciate it. Enjoy your great 4th of July holiday because we're recording this the day before Independence Day. Enjoy your time off, sir. Thanks. You too. Happy 4th.